Hello everyone, welcome to today's Inspection 360 broadcast on cleanliness inspection. My name is Hamish Rossell, I'm a National Sales Specialist for Industrial Microscopy uh, for Olympus and I'll be your host for today. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to let you know that how to engage, we have a chat box uh, over to the right hand side, so feel free to comment, ask questions and we'll make sure that we get those answered uh, throughout the call. Uh, or towards the end, we'll have a, a longer session for questions. One of my colleagues will be monitoring that uh, just to make sure that everything gets checked and answered. Um, a recording will be available. Um, so after about an hour, after we're done with the session, please feel free to revisit the same URL and uh, we'll have a recording available so you can review anything that you've seen today. So let's get started. First, I want to start off with just a few little slides here about the CIX100. Um, the idea behind the CIX100 is to work with the, uh, the cleanliness process, really focusing on the last three steps of that. Um, so we've got the inspection, review, and results. And those are what we're going to uh, really focus on today. Um, the idea is you get your sample through filtration, uh, different me methods of extraction. Um, and then once you have that filter on a filter paper, we can put that onto the CIX100 uh, and then very quickly and easily go through steps four through six and uh, uh, and get a nice result at the end. One of the big reasons that we uh, promote the CIX100 for this application so much is the, the optics on it are fantastic. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, light path on it that um, helps differentiate between reflecting and non-reflecting particles. I'll go into that uh, in just a minute. I've got a, a little pre-recorded video we'll go through. And um, this lets you go through scans really, really quickly. Um, a single scan can differentiate what you need to see, and then we can report out to lots of the most common standards like ISO 16232 and various VDA standards. We also include a height measurement option. Um, I'll be showing that today. And this just lets you use the, uh, the 20X objective, which is a 0.45 numerical aperture uh, to measure the height of any particles you've got uh, on your microscope. So all of these different things that I've just mentioned uh, we'll go through, and this is really what sets modern cleanliness inspection apart from uh, the more conventional methods of doing it through an eyepiece and trying to, to measure using a, uh, a little reticle. So let's not spend too long on the, uh, the PowerPoint and let's get straight on to the presentation. This is the CIX100 home screen. Today we're going to be covering running a sample and then a few of the other things you can do once you've acquired the data from that sample. First we're going to go through inspecting a sample, reviewing the results and creating a report. Then we'll talk a little bit about statistical analysis and data management. And then at the end, some information about inspection configurations. So to start, we'll inspect a sample. First, the microscope is going to acquire an overview image of the sample using the 1.25 times objective. You can see up to here, we can see the objective slighted and the current exposure time for the camera. You'll notice all of these particles have got a bit of a purple hue to them, and that's down to the polarizer and analyzer effect. The way the CIX works is that we have a polarizer, analyzer, and a tint plate, so that anything reflective, like this uh, steel ring around the outside, will appear as purple, and that way we can do a single scan to cut down on time and determine reflecting and non-reflecting. We've got some inspection configurations active here. These are just some of the inspection configurations that come with the system. And uh, we can activate and deactivate to reduce this list so that you only see the ones that you want to see. Today, we're going to run 16232-2018 demonstration. In here, we've got the auto exposure uh, percentage. And we've also got our threshold for particles as an auto percentage. And those are dictated by the standard themselves. So if you heard that there, that was the microscope changing to the five times objective. And we're going to be looking at a five micron filter paper covered in particles that I was able to make. We can click around and verify that our thresholding is correct. That looks great. And then we have the option to fill in all of this information here. So an operator typically would type in any operation dictated to them by these. And then you can also make them mandatory if you want to. For the sake of brevity, I've made an autofill that just puts some information in all of those boxes there. Once we're satisfied that our flow through area, this ring here, matches up with what we want to scan, we can press run inspection. What we're going to see now is the microscope go to these seven different squares, these different positions, 
and perform an autofocus. From there, it can extrapolate out the correct focus position for the entire filter paper, assuming it's relatively flat. If you have a filter paper that's maybe a little bit more uneven, we can increase that number of total points, or if it's very, very flat, we can drop it down to as low as one. The highest we can go is every frame. So now we can see our scan here, building up an image of our uh, filter paper, and then we've got a live view here from the camera. So we've got a feeling for what it's imaging, what it's detecting, and we know that it's, it's scanning correctly and detecting any particles correctly. At any point, we can pause or stop. So we've already exceeded our limits on some of these. So if we wanted to, we could stop, analyze the data, or rewash the part and then clean it again and, uh, and analyze the data again until it's clean enough to pass. As this is uh, a collection of particles that I made from anything I had lying around, it's mostly large particles. It's remarkably hard to make these tiny 5 to 15 micron particles here. And uh, if anyone has any advice, I'd appreciate it. Um, but you can see our thresholds here at the 500, 500, 100, 50, 25, etc. Um, and so we've well and truly failed up here. So in just a few more seconds, we'll be done scanning the whole filter. And like I said before, we've scanned it and we can differentiate it already between reflecting and non-reflecting without having to do a second scan. So now we can see our classes and they line up with the colors on here. So mostly as we'd expect up in this blues and, uh, and violets and yellows. Um, and we can turn that mask on and off just to verify the scan. And then we go to review results. So now we can see all of the different particles it's detected. And if we hover over, we can see the particle family and the ferret max. And if we want to maybe filter down to particles we particularly care about, like reflecting particles, we can come over here and select refle reflecting particles. And now we can see all of these different pieces of reflecting material. So we can select one of these, um, I'll select this one. The microscope will now move to that particle. We can see the class that it falls into. And if we view it in the particle table, we can see some more information. One thing we can do is measure the height. So we've got the height column here, and we can just press measure particle height tool. The microscope will now switch around to that 20x objective. So that's got a 0.45 NA, um, which lets us get a really good reading on the height of the particle. So it's just going to go through from top to bottom uh, through focus very, very quickly, and then use that to calculate the the height based on the focus data. So that's measured that now at 34.2 microns. And it could be that this is a, a particle of particular interest and we would like to see it in full focus. So first we can go over to our sample image, we can verify it's detected correctly. And then in live observation, we can see it here with that beautiful blue hue that lets us know it's reflecting. If we want to get rid of that, we can just press Real color, put in our real color slider, and now we can see the color of the metal itself. So to get a nice in-focus image of this, we can go back to our particle view and just take an EFI. So EFI stands for extended focus image. So it's just going to go through, slice, 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 different focal planes, and then combine all of that in-focus data together to give us a really beautiful snapshot of our particle at the end. So it'll usually take one to three times of doing this to just verify that it's got all of that data nice and in focus. And then that particle image will be linked to the, uh, the particle at the end. And so it will replace any older images of the particle. So you've got the best quality images in your report for the very end. So we're just going through this one more time here just to make sure we've got the best image we can. So we're still getting this stage navigation window, so we can still verify that this is our current field of view, this tiny little square up here. And this is what we're taking this image of here. So if you wanted to do an awful lot more of these, you can actually batch uh, EFI. So if you wanted to make a really comprehensive report, you could select multiple different particles at once and run through. So here's our image. We can do some measurements on this. So if we wanted to measure some additional features, so maybe the width, we can do that and we can move our little Result over here, maybe change the color to orange, and then we can add a comment also. So this is maybe contamination concern. 
So it's linked to particle 336. We can export the measurements or additional measurements out into Excel straight from here. We can copy the picture uh, to our clipboard down here. So you could, if it was a real issue, send an email right away to someone. So back in our particle view, we can review everything, make sure we're happy with the results, make sure it's all done as we expected. And it has, so we can go to creating reports. So it says, do you want to keep changes? Yes, of course I do. Those changes are just the pictures that I took along the way. It's prompting me to remove the real color slider so that next time I run the microscope, everything is configured correctly in the way it should be. And now we can choose our reporting. So we've got an option of the default report templates, the advanced, basic, um, and also then you've got check system and sedimentation value for other fu functions in the microscope. Um, basic is a single page, advanced report is a much longer report. Um, we'll do that one so you can see kind of what you can build into a report on this. And we're going to default to 16232 2018 because that was the standard that we initially ran to. You can also report out to multiple different standards. So if you did want to see if this would pass a different standard or you had different customers that you had to prove your cleanliness to, you could report differently for different customers. And we're going to report into Word. If you wanted to, you could report into uh, a secure Adobe file and then you could sign it and maintain your, uh, your DocuSign and signatures that way, depending on the system that you're using. Fortunately, the, uh, the time down here is in Windows seconds, so it's a little bit quicker than estimated. And now we've got our nice report. So we can see all that information that I'd entered in previously, a nice overview image of our scan, and then our results. So we've got our not okay, because it was way, way out of bounds on, on different areas. And then we can see our images. So we've got things like our largest particles overall, the snapshot that we took there, and then some more details. So we had no reflecting fibers, so there's nothing in that section, but we did have some uh, uh, some other different types of particles. So we had our, our classification for reflecting particles, and we've got our counts and so on, and then our images. And you'll see here we've got that updated higher quality image just inserted there. So this is automatically saved onto the database with the rest of the information, and uh, we can just go home, and we're ready to run another sample. So we've got our data, we've been collecting it all and we can manage it and we can create statistics. So statistics is what I really want to talk to you about. And in here we can do some analysis on our different samples. So I've already set this filter to 16232-10-2007 and with a reasonably short date range. So here are the scans that we've got on here and we can display that data nice and easily as a graphic. So if we put it in log scale and display it by date, you can easily track your contamination over time. You can get any sort of info stamps off this if you wanted to, to get specific results from scans and then enable and disable different uh, contamination levels that may be a concern. And you can view it all numerically also. And this can all be exported into Excel. So if you wanted to do any additional analysis in Excel, you can do that. We've also got comprehensive data management in here. So where before you may have to save all of your different filter papers uh, just in case you have an audit in data management. You've got it all built in here. You can view all your different scans. You can view the reports associated with them. And you can also have control of your archiving, and restoration from archives and compression. And then we have different inspection configurations. And this was the last thing I wanted to touch on today. So this is where you can see any different inspection configuration that's been made on the system, whether it's come preloaded or made by one of us. And you can also see all the different standards. So if we were to open something like 16232, you have the built-in definition, and then you also have the different approval maxima. So this one is based on uh, contamination class, which are tied into this. And you'll notice this is all locked down, because this is the one that comes preloaded. It can't be modified other than your pass-fail criteria. And so you can build this up for anything that you require for checking your particles and your cleanliness levels. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We've had a few questions. What's the smallest particle you can detect? So officially, the smallest particle we can detect is two and a half microns. Uh, so typically, standards only go down to, uh, to five microns. But the system, when run with the 10x, um, can easily detect actually below that two and a half. Two and a half is the official number, um, and it records those. So even if maybe right now you only need to report your smallest particles being 15 microns, um, it records the smallest particles it can see anyway. Uh, so if you had to analyze it to a more stringent standard later, 
they're detected. They're still there, uh, which is something that you can't do with a, an analog scan. I hope that, uh, that helped answer your question there, LK. Um, we've got another question here from Ashley. Uh, can you run two samples back to back? If so, how long does it take? Uh, you can run two, you can load them on there and, uh, and batch through really, really quickly uh, to do that. Um, so it's a really, really quick way um, to, to go through. It allows all the same sort of interaction um, at the beginning with typing in all the information, um, but it just skips over all that review stuff and lots of uh, more in-depth analysis. All right, uh, I don't think we've got any more questions coming in. Uh, so uh, thank you all for taking the time to join me today uh, for this. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to email me, email your local representative, uh, send an inquiry through our website. There's loads more information on there, uh, slightly more in-depth webinars about. And thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a really great day. Thank you.